of this musical bow, the Birimbao, have guided my personal and professional life. By learning to listen to the sounds between the notes, I've discovered a world of possibilities that have unfolded before my ears and my eyes. The Birimbao is a symbol of African culture in Brazil, and its roots come from West, Central, and South African musical bows. As a result, it has emerged as a uniquely Brazilian musical instrument. I want to talk with you today about some things that have inspired me and how I've taken steps to turn that inspiration into making positive change for others. My inspiration is music, and this is what brought me here. The Birimbao is used in a martial art dance game called Capoeira, which comes from Brazil. It sends nonverbal codes to the dancers, telling them when to begin, what style of movements to make, whether there's dangers within or beyond the dancing space, and when to stop. The components of the instrument can hold specific meaning, like the coin used to change the pitch. An old capoeira master told me once that he said, uh, when the African arrived on the shores of Brazil, all he had were the nails on the ends of his hands. And he was talking about an Angolan musical bow pinching technique like this. And he said that the coin symbolizes what the African and Afro-Brazilian have been able to acquire over the centuries. And if you use a Portuguese imperial copper coin, this one's from 1821, you hold in your hand an actual piece of money that was used to purchase somebody's freedom. Masters teach their students about the importance and meaning of the Birimbao through song. For example, in this song, Eu vou ler beaba, beaba do Birimbao, acaba se cachixi, colega veio tem pedaço de pau. Amo é de o arame, now, here's the same song with the same lyrics, but a totally different sound. So both of these are the same song. The first represents the tradition, and the second comes from a band named Bedim Brown, a metaphorical fusion of James Brown and the Birimbao. The music simultaneously combines musical resistance from different time periods, including the era of slavery, the 1960s military dictatorship, and representing today's urban marginalized communities, helping to bring visibility to them. All of these musical sounds filled my head, and I wanted to share them with others, so I wrote a book. 
the first academic study of the Birimbau that's a symbol of national identity within Brazil and a symbol of Brazil throughout the world. I then got to thinking about how I might find meaningful ways to give back to the people who shared so much with me. How could I, as a white North American college professor, make a meaningful difference in the communities with whom I'm partnered? Through sharing my experiences, I hope to inspire you to find ways to make a difference for others within the work that you do. One person who inspired me was Mark Plotkin, a North American ethnobotanist who researched indigenous healing practices in the Suriname rainforest. Instead of collecting one plant and sending it back to his institution in the United States, he collected two, and he set up a dual archive in Suriname, translating all of the research into the local indigenous languages so that future generations could benefit from this research. With this in mind, I started to look at ways in which I could make a change locally in my own immediate environment and how I could make community change on a larger scale. Locally, I created a Brazilian music festival called the Samba Fest with a focus on promoting Brazilian music and culture as well as providing a place for musicians located in the central Connecticut region. I also wanted to find a way of bringing attention to musicians who may not receive recognition in their own communities. That was 14 years ago, and the Samba Fest has now provided direct service to over 60,000 people, as well as more on, through Trini live streaming on Trinity's radio station, as well as on the internet. In 2015, my friend Adriano Giorgi suggested that I bring a Brazilian youth group to the Samba Fest called the Meninos de Minas, the kids from the state of Minas Gerais. This is a social service project designed to help them develop social and citizenship skills, as well as become engaged members of their communities. This group adapts drumming rhythms from a tradition that is hundreds of years old and incorporates these rhythms into regional pop music songs. <laughs> When I first saw them, I thought it was amazing at how much joy and energy they brought out of their music and how they instantly created an instant musical community with everyone who heard them play. I wanted to learn more about the roots of this rich musical tradition. So I put together some ideas. I won a research grant from the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, and I was soon observing drumming masses in churches, talking with multi-generational practitioners, and trying to figure out how could I bring this to Connecticut. I knew that this was an impossible larger-than-life dream, but I knew that if it happened, it would be really cool. I was confident that I could bring one member of the Meninos and one member of the Congado Association, but then it hit me. Just to bring one person from the Congado Association would be a huge task. Many of them are in their 70s, don't have a passport, and have never traveled more than a couple hours from their home throughout their entire lives. I would need to have someone on the ground in a remote rural area to personally walk them through the process with advance money in their pocket to cover all the expenses since just a single visa application could cost more than a month's salary. The Congado practitioners are descendants of enslaved African and Afro-Brazilians and continue to live in economically challenging conditions. The Congado tradition is hundreds of years old and the procession represents a coronation ceremony for an African king. During the time of slavery, this person served as an intermediary between the enslaved population and the plantation owner. These religious processionals weave their way throughout the streets, stopping in front of churches, singing songs in honor of that patron saint, and moving on to the next church because they were not allowed to go inside. 
By the mid-18th century, the religious brotherhood Nossa Senhora do Rosário dos Negros, Our Lady of the Rosary of the Black People, was created. By the 19th century, these religious brotherhoods were building their own churches and pooling their money to purchase, uh, to purchase freedom of their brothers and their sisters. Drumming masses emerged within these churches and the musical instruments helped to preserve this history. For example, the Patangomi shakers and their sounds are believed to have originated from the process of panning for gold, where you scoop the pan into the riverbank and swirl around the mixture of soil and water. The Gunga shakers, attached around the ankles of the participants, are intended to recall the sounds of the leg irons that were shackled upon the bodies of their ancestors. In addition to remembering atrocities, this performative process also helps to give hope for the future. So going back to the 70-year-old practitioners who needed documents and visas in order to travel internationally, I was able to, to form a support coalition with Kleber Camargo Rodriguez, the director of the Meninos, and Ishtael Azevedo, a high school history teacher and journalist who had conducted research on the tradition in Itabira for about 15 or 20 years. Through their long-standing relationships, they helped to convince the elder practitioners that this project was indeed something that may actually happen. They also helped with logistics by personally making several visits accompanying people to the uh, consulate in Belo Horizonte, the state capital, as well as the US consulates in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. As our collective vision gained momentum, we received additional support and before we knew it, the city of Itabira helped to provide travel for 23 participants to come participate in this international festival. We had a great week of workshops and performances. I learned that the Meninos started as a dream, and one of the members, Bruno Messias, was able to gain entrance to college through his participation in the Meninos group. This helped him to bypass the dominance of the SAT style scores, and today he is a certified music teacher. On the other hand, the Congado Association president, Antonio Beato, he shared that when we first met, he didn't think too much of me. Because people with big ideas would come and go. He said what was different is that I came back, and then I came back again. And before he knew it, he was on a plane traveling to the United States, and to cap off his dream, he celebrated his 76th birthday here in Hartford. The crowning achievement of this project was a Misa Conga drumming mass held at the Trinity College Chapel, officiated by Father Antonio Jorge Chingui, a Catholic priest from Angola. When he saw the royal drumming procession approach the church, he recalled his youth in Central Africa, realizing that his homeland was the birthplace of these cultural traditions that were now approaching him, bringing to him a distant past that he was just encountering for the first time. We're pretty confident that this is the first drumming mass of this type to have taken place in the United States. In May 2018, the musicians returned back to Brazil as an international hero, a group of international heroes. Members of the Congado Association received awards of recognition from the Itabira City Council, and in July, I was invited to present an overview of this collaboration in the city hall chambers. The event included a parade through the city, and then I was invited to join city and state officials to hand out new uniforms to the 300 members of the city's 11 Congado processional groups. In recognition of this international success, I was invited to return in September to receive the award of Honorary Citizen of the City of Itabira. This is what happened to me, and I was moved by the joy of the Meninos Geminas, and I wanted to learn more. By asking a single question about the roots of this musical tradition, 
and learning about its meaning and significance through multi-generational practitioners, I was able to take a single idea and truly make a difference in hundreds of people's lives. I couldn't have done it by myself, but the most important thing is that people came together, visualized the same dream, saw the work that needed to be done, and did it. What's your dream? What do you want to do that can make a difference for others? Maybe you can start with a single idea that comes from your own interests, hobbies, or passions. First, share it with others, those who collectively see the beauty in that vision. If you're committed to bringing that to life and embracing the obstacles that lie in your path, you too can make a difference for someone. One of the most important things you can do is to be persistent. Once you have a big idea, be sure to come back to it and come back again until it becomes a reality. Thank you.